Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. My name is Richard Priest Kiva Hawk, and I'd like to serve you forever as a priest starting very soon. It's now time to start finding your seats for Sabbath services. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Sabbat shalom, everyone. My name is Future Police Shiloh Fisher, and I'd like to serve you as a priest starting very soon. It's my privilege and honor to present to you the future priests and priestesses now entering the sanctuary. It's my honor and privilege to present to you our first speaker, future priest, Nian Hawkins. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You may be seated. The topic of my speech is how I created and maintains the solar system. I would like to draw your focus to your amazing and awesome powers. shown to us in the maintaining of our solar system. Please turn over in your book of Yai to Psalms 8.3. Found on page 437, Psalms 8.3. When we consider your heavens, the work your fingers frame, the work of the moon, the work of the stars, which are by you ordained. In this illustration of our solar system, we see the nine planets just orbit around the sun. The sun here, the planet Mercury is closest to the sun. Moving out, we have Venus. Earth, which Yahweh has chosen to place us. Then Mars, Jup Jupiter which is the largest planet in our solar system. Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. All these planets have been named after gods by man. We will correct that very soon. If you remember, Overseer Yishol Hawkins has told us, Yai is the greatest servant of all. We see an example of this every day here on Earth. Yai provides us with air to breathe, sunlight, and all our daily needs. Without these, we would die. We also see Yai's attitude of servitude shown by us by maintaining his solar system, of our solar system, keeping it functioning perfectly. If Yahweh stopped serving us, think how quickly the solar system would be destroyed. The Earth could easily get off orbit and crash into another planet or the sun. Yahweh's power is so great, he can create new and bigger planets than ever seen before, just in one day. Recently, science has discovered one of Yai's newly formed planets, HD 106906b. This planet is 11 times more massive than Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. Yai desires to grant us a ruling authority over that and much more of his creation. Remember, Genesis 1.26 shows Yai created us to be just like him, to be a servant to all creation. 
In closing, turn over to Psalm 8, 6. Psalms 8, 6. You've made man to be the ruler over the works of your hands. You will put all things under his feet. Let's all overcome sin and learn how to be servants just like I by following the example of servitude set by Yah's last day's witness, Israel Hawkins. May I bless your understanding? It's a privilege and honor to introduce to you future priest Yeshin Hawkins. Shabbat shalom, everyone. May the peace of God be with you tonight. Love you. Pastor wants me to teach you this song. Do you think I can? Yeah. Do you think I can? Yeah. Only believe. May you please play the song?
talk about the two witnesses. I am going to start in the book called The Two Witnesses on page 11. It says, One of Yahweh's two witnesses. One of Yahweh's two witnesses, or so. So means to worship. For, for, Yahweh's, for Yahweh, in everything that he does, and will not be against Yahweh, as the majority of the people in this world are. Well, what will the two witnesses do? Well, you'll see just in a minute. To serve means to worship. The witness Yeshua will serve and worship Yahweh at his house. One, one witness will be given to the curse, and, and the other will live and do Yahweh's laws and ways. This is prophesied in Isaiah 43 verse 28. I will dissolve the Levitical priesthood, and I will give Yaakov to the curse and Yisrael to the plotters. On page 558, <laughs> everything Yahweh does is prophesied in advance. Um, if you can turn over to Amosia, Amosia 3 verse 7, Father Yahweh will have no work other than the work that he has prophesied in advance by his servants, the prophets. One witness will change his name under duress. You can read about the witnesses' book encounter, about the witnesses Yaakov's encounter on the train on page 187 on the two witnesses. Of, of the two witnesses. The other witness, Yisrael, will change his name legally. We see this prophecy in Isaiah 44, verse 5. In Isaiah 44, verse 5, and it says, one, one will say, I belong to Yahweh, and the same will call himself with the name of Yaakov. The other will subscribe with his hand and write, I belong to Yahweh, and so name himself with the name of Israel. This is what. No. Okay. On page 558, if anyone can turn over to Revelation 11, 11 verse 1 through 4. And there was given me a reed like a measuring rod, and the malik stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of Yahweh, and, and the altar and its confines, where they worship within. But the court which is outside the temple, leave, leave out the measure is not, for it is given to the Gentiles. And the holy cities, they will tread under for three and one half years. And I will give to my two witnesses to perform their prophetic offices. And they will... foretell events about the three and one half years. Those cast out with darkness, these are as it will. 
about the two olive trees, and as and as it were, the two lamps of the seven lampstands, seven lamp lampstand, ministering for the Father in the earth. The two witnesses will fulfill Yahweh's work and bring this message to the entire world. For more information, you can read the Two Witnesses book. The Two Witnesses book. And if you will all please stand, it's my privilege and honor to present to you our first, uh, the next speaker called uh, Barzillai. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You may see it. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. My topic today is nuclear war and how to be delivered from it. Just as Yeshua Messiah said it would be, so it is today. There is only bitterness, distrust, and resentment among the nations. And the world leaders are taking sides and gearing up for the, for the soon coming nuclear wars that will darken the sun that Yeshua spoke of in Matthew 24, 29. Now, Zechariah 14, 12 also speaks about the terrible nuclear war which will soon break out. But in fact, let's go to Zechariah 14, 12. Zechariah 14, 12, and it's on page, it's on page 723. And it says, and this will be the plague which, with which Yahweh will strike all, strike all the people who have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh will consume away, away while they are standing upon their feet. And their eyes will consume away in their sockets. And their tongues will consume away in their mouths. So the, as you can see in this picture right here, this is what um, Zechariah fourteen twelve is speaking of. Uh, their flesh will consume away while they are standing up. This description fits perfectly with what occurred in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in World War II. As you can see from this picture, the people in these cities were vaporized instantly by the heat from the bombs. Their bones fell to the ground instantly. This is going to occur to millions more during this generation. By the time this is over, four-fifths of the Earth's population will be destroyed because of the hatred because of the hatred and anger among the nations who do not know or keep Yahweh's laws. But there is a way to, ex to escape. Please turn over with me to Yael. Yeah, yield to uh, 32. Yeah, yield to 32. It's on page 693. It says, And whoever will call with the name of Yahweh will be delivered. For in Mount Zion, in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance. As Yahweh has said among among the remnant 
who have escaped of those who, whom Yahweh calls. Remember that Mount Zion means those who keep the 613 laws, and Jerusalem is speaking of the priest who teaches peace at Abilene, at Abilene Texas, Yeshua Hawkins. It tells us that those who call with the name of Yahweh will be delivered or rescued. What does it mean to call on Yahweh? Yahweh? Does it mean to yell out his name and say, Yahweh, help? Well, not quite. First, we have to learn how to call with Yahweh's name, and we can do that without we can't do that without the one cent Yishel Hawkins. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. Now if you would turn over to Romans 10, 13 through 15. Romans 10, 13 through 15, found on page 881. For whoever calls with the name of Yahweh will be saved. How then can they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how will they how will they believe in him of whom they have had not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the message of peace, who bring glad tidings of righteous things. As you can see, only the one sent in these last days, Yeshua Hawkins, spoken of in prophecy, in Isaiah 44, verse 1, and Isaiah 49, verse 3, can teach us how to call with Yahweh's name as a seed, as a seed of the one sent, Yeshua Hawkins. I will help you get started. Please turn over to 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, 2.22. 2 Timothy 2.22. Also flee from youth, youthful lust, but follow after righteous faith, righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Those with those who call on Yahweh, Yahweh, out of a pure heart. Praise Yahweh. I would now like to turn it over to the next teacher, future priest, Odiah. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the PCI be with each and every one of you. The title of my speech is The New Moon. The new moon is very important, important, and we should be here at the house of Yahweh to celebrate with our family. For my first scripture, please turn over to Isaiah 66. On page five, page five seventy two.
And it will come to pass that from one new moon to another and one Sabbath to another Sabbath, all flesh will come to worship before me, says Yahweh. We need to be careful not to allow anyone to, con to convince us that the new moon is not important. Also, in Colossians 2, 16, verse 17, it talks, about, it talks about not letting your guard down for the new moon. Pastor has recently reminded us that we must prepare, appear before Yahweh each new moon so we, so we can come to learn, eat together, and rejoice. We are told to watch for the new moon and green ears of barley. Found in Deuteronomy 16, verse 1, on page 160. Please turn with me there. Which from one new which from one new moon to another green ears of barley, a bib and sacrifice to pass over to Yahweh your father for the new moon of green ears of barley, Yahweh your father brought you out of Egypt by night. This first moon is very, imp is very important as it is used to set the feast of Passover and unleavened bread. Found in Leviticus 23, verse 5 and 6. Also, you can learn more about watching for the new moon and let the little children also come to me book on page 33. In conclusion, I would like to remind you to, to remember to watch, to watch for the upcoming new moon seven days from today on 3-12, on 3-12, sundown. Be there with with the family of Yahweh at the place Yahweh has chosen to place his name, and there you must go, the house of Yahweh. And with that, if you all please stand. I'd like to turn it over to future priest Buffalo Bill. Shabbat Shalom, everyone! You may be seated. And the PCI is going to thank you to every one of you. Today my title is Be, be Thankful. Being thankful is important because if we're not thankful for all Yahweh has done for us, we can lose our blessings. Let's turn to page 479. Psalm, it's Psalms 109. Let's look at verse 17. It says, since he wants to pronounce the curse, so may a curse come on him. Since he found no pleasure in his blessings, so may his blessing be far from him. Be thankful, even though you may not have everything you want. Don't complain. Being thankful is so very important. In Romans 1, Yah talks about unthankful people. But let's turn to page 122. Numbers 14, let's look at verse 1. It says, Then all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moshe and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Do not murmur. And let's turn to Philippians 2, verse 14 on page 922. It 
says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Oh, we've got an th- example of a thankful person. It's Pastor. Pastor has always been thankful for everything. He has been lied about. He's been falsely accused, but he joins in his tribulation. See? He's smiling. He's rejoicing. He don't let anything stop him. Even though they're lying about him, and they're telling him that he, he had molested children, and that his people had dogs, and that he was sick and he was nasty, but he didn't let any of that stop him. And he's innocent. Let's turn to page um, 972. It's Revelation 2.17. Since he who was in you, let him hear the Spirit says to the called out ones of the house of Yahweh. To him I will give to you the hidden manna, and I will give to him a white stone, sentence of acquittal, and in, there's in, and in the stone a restored name, Yahweh, which, which no one acknowledges except he who understands. Pastor is innocent. He did all things without complaining, murmuring, and disputing. So let's follow that example and do all things without complaining, murmuring, and disputing. With that, I'll turn it over to the great speaker of Israel, Nebiah Hawkins. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. The title of my speech today is Rejoicing on the Sabbath. Remember what Exodus 20 verse 8 says, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And part of keeping the Sabbath day holy is to rejoice. The seventh day Sabbath is a commanded commanded feast. It is a day of joy and gladness and of serving others, which makes the Sabbath a blessing. Israel Hawkins said a way to overcome is to rejoice. And rejoice means to be joyful. If you can turn to page 930 in your books of Yahweh, Turn to page 930. And that is that is 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 through 18. And it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything giving thanks, for this is the will of Yahweh and Yeshua Messiah for you. You can also turn to page 923. It's it's Philippians, Philippians 4, verse 4. It's on page 923. And it says, Rejoice in Yahweh always. Again, I say rejoice. So we need to rejoice. So if you can ter- also turn to Isaiah. Isaiah 58. Verse 13 through 14 is on page 567. It is Isaiah 58, verse 13 through 14. And it says, If you turn away your foot from breaking my Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure, your own business, on my holy day, and call my Sabbath the delight, the holy day of Yahweh honorable and will honor him by not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasure, not engaging in idle conversation, then you will find your joy in Yahweh. And I will cause you to ride on the high places of the earth and I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. We learn to rejoice on the Sabbath, but we need to rejoice on every day not just the Sabbath. Some days of the feast are Sabbath. Some days of the feast are Sabbath as well. And if you want to find out what days of the feast are Sabbath, you can read Leviticus 23. But if you can turn to Exodus. Exodus 31. Exodus 31, verse 13. It's on page 71, and it says, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, 
Surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for there are a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am Yahweh who sanctifies you and makes you holy. Remember that the Sabbaths are everlasting appointments with Yahweh. And we need a, uh, one example of where someone, where a person told someone else to rejoice in the scriptures is that in Nehemiah, Nehemiah 8, verse 9 through 10, it's on page 398. 398. It's Nehemiah. Nehemiah 8, verse 9 through 10. It's on page 398, and it says, Then Nehemiah, the governor, then Nehemiah the governor, Israel the priest and scribe, and the Levites who instructed the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to your, to your father. Do not mourn nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Nehemiah said to them, Go enjoy your rich fruit, food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared, pre who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to Yahweh. Do not grieve nor sorrow, for, for your joy is in Yahweh. For your joy, for your joy in Yahweh is your strength. So you see, he told him to, that he needed to, that they needed to rejoice on the Sabbath. So remember to rejoice on all of Yahweh's Sabbath days. And now I'll turn it over to the next speaker, future priest Yeshua. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Today, the title of my speech is Tests. Now, if you all will turn with me to Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verses 36 through 37, on page 951, and it said, Others had tr trial of cruel mo mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and, impri and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were tested, s slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, cruelly treated. Now look down to, ver to verse 39 and 40. And all these, having obtained a righteous report through the faith, have not received the promise. Yahweh, having provided some better things for us, that they without us would not be made perfect. These men were being persecuted. They were being tested. The word trial in Strong's Exhaustive Concordance is word 3984 in the Greek and means a test, experience, assay, or a trial. That's where 3984 in the Greek. Now, trials are hardships that try our faith. Tests, tests are things that manifest a person's real character. If you would turn with me to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. On page 893, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and it says, There is no temptation taken hold of you except what is common to man. Yeah. And Yahweh is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also make the way, the way of escape that you may, may be able to bear. Now, Yahweh won't test you with something you cannot bear. Let's turn over to 1 Kepha 1, chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. Chapter 1, verses 6 through 7, on page 957. And it says, In this you greatly rejoice, 
Through now for a little while you must suffer grief through manifold, manifold temptations. The, the trial of faith be, being much more precious than gold, which perishes through, through its tried with, though it's tried with fire, might be found worthy of praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Yahshua Messiah. Now, Pastor Yeshua Hawkins was perse persecuted, and he rejoiced while he was being persecuted. So, and we should follow his example. There are many ways to be tested, like by family members not in the house, or by the beastly system, like getting fired from your job because you tell your boss you can't work on Sabbath. But we have to endure to receive the white stone, the stone of acquittal. In closing, turn to Jacob, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Jacob, chapter 1, one verses 2 through 4, on page 953. And it says, My brothers, count it a all joy when you fall into various temptations, trials, knowing that the testing of your faith develops endurance. And let endurance have its perfect work, that you may become perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Count it a joy to be tested. And with this, I'll turn it over to future to Deacon Shaloma. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. All right. Today for the news, we have um, the first article is the Pope says that he will only be in, in that office for two to three years because uh, he thinks God didn't want him to be in that, in the, in that office. All right. California's snow melt. The um, the snow that's normally on the on the mountain caps, it, there wasn't a lot of snow this year, so now California is running out of water. Now, low water current keeps the plants keeps a lot of uh, plants in the in the river there, and um, it causes a lot of plants to grow. The low current, because what occurs is the current normally pushes all the the weeds and stuff down into the into the the lakes there, but since there's a lot of low current, the the plants are just staying there. Um, depleted water in California causes more earthquakes because the the aquifers, when they run out of water, then the earth is going to start going back down, and it's causing earthquakes. Spirogyra, it's a form of algae kills sponges that purify the water, and sewer doesn't help it, sewer from private ships. Now that, the lake there, I couldn't get the name, but it holds one-fifth of the world's fresh water, and the lake is being, it has all this spiragyra in it. Two officers got shot in a rally in Ferguson, Missouri, the United States Secret Service was drunk and he ran into a barricade of a great, or uh, an investigation. The Congress was against Barack Obama's peace deals, but here in the House of Yahweh, we back him up with the Peaceful Solution Church Education Program. Um, Iraqi man was shot in Dallas. This is what Pastor was talking about last week. He was shot in Dallas, and that was his first day. He saw snow, and he was going to take pictures, and he got shot. And then we have a little thing, a little thing from TED Talks, and he's talking about microbes in the gut. Now listen very closely to this, because he talks about microbes in the gut, and they affect the way people behave. And if you look at Isaiah 66:17. It talks about the priest who eats swine's flesh. So when they eat the swine, it goes into their gut, and it affects the way they behave. 
if you have the new prophetic word, um, it's uh, March 2015, on page 25. It says serotonin, or kingdoms of these microbes, work together with trillions of kingdoms of other microbes to make the body function properly. As science knows very well, these kingdoms of microbes are set by law to work together in unity. When one law is broken, even what some would consider a small law, such as not eating unclean animals, for example, the swine, that this unity or that unity then becomes disunity. As a result, trouble, called sickness, but referred to as defilement in the scriptures, begins. This is because an enemy has invaded your body and started wars that begin breaking down the organs supplied by serotonin. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to future priest Melchizedek Hawkins. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Today I'd like to speak on the subject of how Yahweh will provide, protect, and help us if we keep the laws. Now I'm going to break this down. You, the word protect in the Webster's New Riverside University Dictionary means, one, to cover, two, to keep from harm or attack or injury, three, to guard, four, to aid, or five, a pass injury, or a pass ensuring safety. So using scripture, I'm gonna break this down for you. So the first definition was to cover. If we could turn over to Psalms 91, and it's verse four, it's found on page 471. Psalms 91, verse four. It says, he will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will trust. His truth will be your shield and buckler. Okay. Then the second definition was to keep from harm, attack, or injury. In Psalms 91, verse 3, 7, and 10, I'll read it for you. Um, it says, surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome, deadly pestilence. Verse 7, it says, A thousand will fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. And verse 10, it says, No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your dwelling. And then the third definition is to guard. In Psalms 91, verse 8, it says, Only with your eyes you will look, and you will see the reward of the wicked. So he will protect you here, and uh, only with your eyes you'll see the reward of the wicked because he'll guard you if you keep the laws of Yahweh. And then the fourth um, definition was um, to aid, and the fifth definition was to uh, pass ensuring safety. Now the shadow of the Almighty is set appointments with Yahweh that the world hates because the world belongs to and worships Satan. If we could turn over to Romans, it's found on page 878. Romans 6 and it's verse 16. It's found on page 878. And it says, Do you not know that to whom you yield yourselves as servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin which leads to death or of obedience which re leads to righteousness. So this practice of righteousness is keeping our appointments with Yahweh, and it assures Yahweh's shadow of protection, and also that we belong to Yahweh and not to Satan for her destruction. If we could turn over to Yachin on 8, it's verse, 40, on verse 44, it's found on page 825. Okay, 
Yachanan 8, verse 44, and it says, You are of your teacher, who is Satan the devil, and whatever she who is your teacher desires, you will do. She was a murderer from the beginning and remained not in the truth, because there is no truth in her. Therefore, whenever you speak her falsehoods, you speak her words, because she is a liar and the teacher of all lies. So you can see there that uh, those that belong to Yahweh keep the laws of Yahweh. And those that belong to Satan don't keep the laws of Yahweh. And as you can see in the news that future priest Shalomo brought out there, you can see how the people out in the world, they don't have Yahweh's protection. And it says, this is the first thing we must do is choose whom we will obey and who we'll be obedient to. Like in First uh, Yachanan 3, verse 7, it talks about this. Uh, and it says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. So if you practice righteousness, you're of Yahweh. So don't let any man deceive you. No man, no religion, no pope, nor preacher tell you otherwise and deceive you into losing your salvation or your protection and place in Yahweh's kingdom. Because he who practices righteousness is righteous, and the same, and they belong to Yahweh, the creator. And you cannot tell yourself that you believe, that you believe the laws while you practice evil. So you can't say, oh yeah, I keep Yahweh's 613 laws while you're eating pork or stealing or trespassing. So, um, so you cannot, um, it says, while you practice evil and wickedness, as do the religions of the whole world, because Satan has the whole world deceived. And so they tell themselves, oh, only believe, and Jesus did it all for you. But this is not true. If we could turn over to Revelations 12, it's verse 9. It's found on page 979. And it says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world. She was cast out into the earth, and her angels were cast out with her. So that is why the prophets, apostles, and Yahshua Messiah stress so much warning about the following deception, instead of what the prophets, apostles, and Savior taught. 1 Corinthians, if you could all turn there, it's found on page 890. Page 890. And it's uh, 1 Corinthians 6, and it's verse 9 through 11. And it's, uh, it says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? So if you do not practice the laws of Yahweh, then, then you are unrighteous, and you will not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. It says, Do not deceive yourselves, neither fornicators, nor God worshippers, worshippers of Elohim, nor adulterers, nor men who commit sexual perversions with other boys, nor men who per commit sexual perversions with other men, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extorners will inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. And such were some of you, but now you are washed and sanctified, and now you are justified in the name of Yahshua Messiah and by the Spirit of our Father. So all the things that it named there are things that people do and they when they do whenever they do these things they break the laws of Yahweh. So this should be plain enough without explanation. But notice the word unrighteous in that verse. To be righteous you must keep Yahweh's guiding laws of righteousness. And there is no instruction at all in the inspired scriptures that changes the way of instruction into the kingdom. Now the religions change these instructions, deceiving themselves because they hate Yahweh. Yes, the religions, if you could see there, yes, the religions, as you can see there, that's the Catholic Church, they change the laws of Yahweh, saying, oh yeah, just believe. You can see right there. Okay. So they changed the laws of Yahweh. And uh, because they hate Yahweh, the creator of true righteousness, 
and Yahshua Messiah who exposed their sins and is still exposing their sins today. If we could turn over to Yachanan 15. Yachanan 15. It's found on page 833. It's Yachanan 15, verse 22, 22 to 23. And it says, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have their sins revealed. But now they have no cloak covering for their sins. He who hates me also hates my father. If I had not done among the works which no other man did, they would not have their sins revealed. But now they have both seen these works and have hated me and my father. So where lies your protection? If we could go over to Deuteronomy 12, verse 5. It's Deuteronomy 12, and it's verse 5. It's found on page 157. And it says, But you are to seek the habitation of your father, the house of Yahweh, the place which Yahweh your father shall choose out of all your tribes to establish his name, and there you must go. Notice, it says the house of Yahweh. It doesn't say the Catholic Church. So Yahweh established his name at the house of Yahweh. You can see that. Praise Yahweh. It doesn't say the Catholic Church or the world or any other place. It says the house of Yahweh. And uh, so uh, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we should put our trust and we should know that Yahweh will protect us if we keep the laws of Yahweh. So with that, everyone please stand. And I'll turn it over to the great Deacon Abba Shalom. Not home, everyone. You may be seated, but the PCR will be with each and every one of you. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be talking about Yahweh's promises. Okay? <clears throat> Yahweh's promises not only to those who keep his laws, but also to those who don't. Um. Now, Yahweh promises peace, joy, love, um, protection, spirit holy, eternal life, blessings, even a stone of acquittal, and much, much more for those that um, keep his laws and overcome sin. Now, he also promises something to those that don't, as we'll get into a little later. Now, uh, Pastor, in many sermons, he goes into great detail about um, what Yahweh's promise is and how to get these promises. Um, but Yahweh explains these promises to his people in Deuteronomy 28. Um, if you could turn to Deuteronomy 28. In the first 14 verses... Um, are the blessings or the promises to those who keep his laws. Now, the last part of the chapter is the promises to those who don't keep his laws. Okay, and you see who's not keeping his laws um, in the world today. And you can see the curses coming to them. Um, I have an article here. Okay, it says, Blinding cases of syphilis found on the west coast, now potentially in L.A. Okay, it, uh, in the article, it's talking about how um, the syphilis that's more prominent in the gay community uh, says most of them uh, among gay men. Uh, so you can see, because they're not keeping these laws, um, they're getting these diseases. Uh, in the first book of Israel, Page 32. First book of Israel. On page 32, Pastor, um, he says, He will establish you. If you, turn, if, you keep the, these, if you keep these, that's his first promise in Genesis, that he will establish you as his holy people. Holy people are the ones who follow the laws of health, who do not eat pork or drink blood, and who will sprinkle salt. Remember that uh, salt. Pastor talked about it last week. 
He will sprinkle salt on all the sacrifices. That is a part of holiness and loving it, loving to follow the, this way, because that's what brings you what you really want in life. He says, I don't think anyone wants their bodies to be wrecked. I don't think anyone wants AIDS, syphilis, uh, chlamydia, gonorrhea, or any of the stupid stuff that the world is plagued with. Okay, and you can see it. This is proof that the world is plagued with these things. It says, Yahweh has promised to take these things away from you, if you, uh, and anyone else who will follow it. That's what he promised Israel to. And then skipping down a little bit, it says, if you do not follow these laws, these statutes, then these curses here will come upon you. So we can see, so we can look out and see them very well in the world today. And this is just one example. Okay, in the news, you can see the um, diseases coming out, the sickness. These are the curses of the other part of the promise that is in Deuteronomy 28. Now, in the second book, Israel, going on to perfection, page 231, um, it says, Yahweh makes a promise to this generation, and it says, You are this generation of the house of Yahweh, the last generation of the 6,000-year cycle. You are it. Yahweh promises you that this generation will not come to, will not pass away until all these things are fulfilled. One of these things is that, one of these things that he is talking about was his coming in verse 30. The coming of Yahshua is one of the things he promises. You are going to see it. Okay, so Yahweh makes a lot of promises to his people. And then, uh, Pastor goes into even greater detail. I don't have time to get into it. But in the 13th book of Yisrael, the first chapter, he goes into great te detail um, about Deuteronomy 28 and uh, promises. It says, by refusing the first 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28, the world has chosen the curses in the last part of the chapter, and they have no answers. Only Yahweh has the answers. Okay, so you can see the curses that are, are coming to this world because they do not keep the laws of Yahweh. Now, in the Mark of the Beast, um, this is a really great book, excellent book to read. The Mark of the Beast, part two, um, especially uh, chapters one and 13, this book, go into great detail about Yahweh's promises. And on page seven, it um, says, Yahweh's promise of protection is only for those, or only for the prophesied house of Yahweh, those who are actually fulfilling the word of Yahweh's patience. Now, on page 5, it has some more about it. Um, but on page 172, uh, chapter 13, okay, chapter 13 is called The Rewards of the right Righteous. It's on page 172. And I can turn that around and make 217. Um, but on page 190, it, uh, it says, Revelations 217. To him that overcomes, I'll give him to eat of, a, of the hidden manna, and I'll give to him a white stone. And in this stone a new name written, which no man knows, saying uh, that he received it. And it says, The hidden manna is simply the bread of life. The white stone is a verdict of acquittal and a ticket of admonition into the kingdom of Yahweh. So this is another promise that Yahweh has made to his people. Now, skipping down a little bit, it says, The overcomers will be given rule over the nations. Those who will have the rod of iron will only be those who overcome now. Uh, the rod of iron shows the strength and the strict rule with the absolute has authority to persuade and enforce the keeping of Yahweh's laws in the new world. The morning star is salvation, and Yahshua Messiah has redeemed us for salvation. And he identifies himself as the morning star in Revelation 22.16. It says the etymology of the words morning star in Revelation 2.28 indicate the first to stand. Those who stand for a verdict of righteousness will be given salvation, okay? But how do you stand? How are we going to stand? Okay, and who will stand? Who will stand? 
Now, if you could turn over to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, and uh, look at verse 13. Ephesians 6, 13. It says, Take up the whole armor of Yahweh, that you might be able to withstand uh, in the evil day, and having overcome all, to stand. Okay? What is the whole armor of Yahweh? Okay, and how are we going to be able to stand? We can turn over to Revelation 6. 6, verse 15. Well, Six sixteen actually. Um, it says, let's let's go to verse fifteen. It says, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, sought protection for themselves in the governments, and in the assemblies of the houses of their gods. Okay, so they sought protection in the houses of their gods, and said to the houses of their gods, Elohim, and to the assemblies. Fall on us and protect us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day um, of his wrath has come. And who will be able to stand? Okay, who will be able to stand? Turn over to Revelation 22, verse 14. And it says, Blessed are those who keep his laws, that they may have right to the tree of life and enter into the gate of the city. Okay, so blessed are those who keep his laws. Those are who are going to be able to stand. Okay? Once you take on that whole armor in Ephesians 6.13, 613 laws of Yahweh, you can see pastors able to stand. Pastor's able to stand because he has that whole armor. He has the 613 laws of Yahweh, the book of Yahweh. Okay, that's the whole armor of Yahweh. It's not a physical, um, it's, not a, it's not physical warfare. It's the whole armor, the 613 laws of Yahweh. And that's how we'll be able to stand. Okay? That's how we're going to be able to stand in front of Yahweh with the 613 laws of Yahweh. Okay, so with that, I'll turn it over to future priest, the future priest, Kway Buffalo, for. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Today I want to speak about a peaceful place to be. And why I chose that uh, title for my um, sermon today is I wanted to show where the protected and peaceful place is and how to achieve the rewards that come from following Yahweh's laws at this place. So I'm going to be talking about a peaceful place to be. A peaceful place to be. And I'm also going to show in this sermon how we can find peace at Yahweh's house on the cover of the 09 to 010, or the cover of the 09 to um, 10, 2010 Prophetic Word magazine. Many people in the, I'm going to be using some basics for any of you that have just um, tuned, uh, tuned into the house of Yahweh. Many people in the world today are searching for a peaceful place to be. A peaceful place to be from all the wars, the fightings, the killings, and the natural disasters. They are tired of being lied to by popes and preachers, but very few, very few have discovered where this place is, as seen on page 733 of your book of Yahweh, if you will all turn there. That's Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14. Enter in through the narrow gate. And we're going to find out what this narrow gate is. Enter in through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. 
Broad is the way that leads to destruction. They readily let everyone in who wants to learn of destruction. And many are those who go that way. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads to life, and few are those who find it. Very few find that gate. And the house of Yahweh, right here in Abilene, Texas, is the road less traveled as the peaceful solution character education program intermediate series character unit talks about on page two. The road less traveled. The problem is when people look on the map, it, the, where the peaceful place is laughs them in the face. And when they look in the Bible once in a blue moon, it shows them the directions. If you would turn to page 531. in your book of Yahweh. That's Isaiah 2, and we're going to read verse 1 to 4. It says, The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Yada and Jerusalem. So, remember, um, remember Isaiah, okay? He's, he's going to be the first witness who's going to tell us where this peaceful place will be. It will come to pass in the last days that the mountain promotion of the house of Yahweh will be established in the chief of the nations and will be raised above all congregations and all nations will eventually flow to it. And many people will go and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the father of Yaakov. And he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths, for the law will depart from Zion. So it's not going to be uh, on Mount Zion. The law will depart from there. And the word of Yahweh will depart from Jerusalem. It's not there either. He will judge among the nations and will rebuke many people. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn war anymore. So once they come to the house of Yahweh and learn at the house of Yahweh, why not to war and why not to fight? They will turn their weapons of war, their spears, their guns, their bombs. They will turn those things into things that are useful, that will promote Yahweh and promote his house. So remember Isaiah 2, verse one, verses 1 to 4. Now let's turn to page 705. Let's look at Micaiah 4, verse 1 to 3. Verses 1 to 3, it says, But in the last days it will come to pass that the mountain, promotion of where? The house of Yahweh will be established in the chief of the nations. It will be raised above all congregations, and all peoples will eventually flow to it. And many nations will come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain uplifting of Yahweh, not the mountain uplifting of Satan or the mountain uplifting of Pope Francis, the mountain uplifting of Yahweh. And to the house of the father of Yaakov, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, because the law will depart from Zion and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Same thing that um, I, the prophet Isaiah said. And he will judge between many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up a sword against nation, nor will they learn war anymore. Once they come here to the house of Yahweh, they will not war. They will not fight. They will learn the way of peace because this is the peaceful place to be. So Yahweh has given us two witnesses here, both the prophet Isaiah and the prophet Micaiah, that the house of Yahweh is the peaceful and protected place. People don't realize there is a peaceful place. It is the house of Yahweh where peace, protection, joy, and love is offered.
peace, joy, and love is offered at the house of Yahweh. People don't understand that there is nothing. Get that. There is nothing that they are missing out in this world when you are in the house of Yahweh. Another deception that's going around out there is that Pope Francis teaches that salvation is found at the Roman Catholic Church. And that is a big deception. It's a big lie. And we just uh, saw some news relating to prophecy, but Mr. Pope, I have some more news for you. Salvation is only offered here at Yahweh's house. Period. It's not offered anywhere else. Right here is where salvation is found. In Deuteronomy 12:5, if you would turn there. Deuteronomy 12 verse 5. Yahweh commands us to come to the peaceful place. Remember, Isaiah and Micaiah said that nation will not lift up a sword against nation. They're not going to learn war because they're only, they're only going to learn peace at the peaceful place. Deuteronomy 12.5, Yahweh commands us to come here. It says, but you are to seek the habitation of your father. Not um, you can seek here if you want to. You are to seek the habitation of your father, the house of Yahweh, the place which Yahweh your father shall choose out of all your tribes to establish his name, and there you must go. The house of Yahweh offers all these things. It offers peace, it offers joy, it offers love, abundant living, and clean, healthy food, and in a nutshell, it offers blessings. Okay? Let's see what the world has to offer that you think you are missing. If you think you are missing anything out in the world, we're going to see right now what you think you're missing. The house of Yahweh is the only. You need to get that word. Only. It is the only peaceful and protected place in the whole world. Yahweh has given us this blessing, and we need to be thankful that Yahweh has given us the house of Yahweh. And remember, in the O2 2010 prophetic word on the cover, it says, Yahweh invites you to the most important feast in the history of mankind. Yahweh is inviting you to the feast of the harvest um, this year, and you need to come, and you um, you need to try with all your might to come and observe Yahweh's feast right here at this place. When we practice righteousness, we can fulfill pastor's dream for us. We can receive the same white stone of acquittal that our overseer has received. And with that, um, keep coming to the classes and keep in your mind that this is the only peaceful and protected place to be. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the great future priest deacon, Jacob Hawkins. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Today I will be speaking on Yahweh's shadow. Now, uh, to start off in the self-control teacher's manual, you can, you can see the shadow there, but if, you, if you, that's what you think I'll be talking about, guess what? You're jumping to conclusions. <laughs> now, if you turn to uh, Colossians, Colossians 2, verse 16 and 17, it says, Therefore, let no man con condemn you for doing these things, eating and drinking in the observance of a feast day or of a new moon or of the Sabbath day, which are a shadow or protection from things to come for the body of Messiah. Now, we have to remember we have to be totally obedient to receive Yahweh's shadow. We have to overcome to get this stone. Now, the word shadow in uh, the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance is word number 60, 
or 6738 in the Hebrew, and it means shade, shadow, and it's from 6751, which means hovering over, to shade, begin to be dark, and shadowing. Then uh, in the Greek, 4639, it means shade or a shadow. Now in the scriptures, in the, uh, the Holy Scriptures, in the book of Yahweh, there's many examples of people who had Yahweh's protection. Now, uh, if you turn to Hebrews, Hebrews 11, and we'll start at verse 24. Hebrews 11, verse 24, that's found on page 950. It says, By the faith, Moshe, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So you see there, Moshe, he wanted, uh, he wanted to be with the people of Yahweh and to be called by the name of Yahweh rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And we know there's nothing out in this world, brethren. Verse 32, if you skip down, it says, And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Ye Yephthah, also of David and Samuel and of the prophets, who through the faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained the promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Verse 34, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became uh, valiant in battle, turned the armies of the aliens to flight. Uh, verse 35, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Uh, verse 36, and others had trial of cruel mocking, mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned and they were sawed in two, were tested and slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, cruelly treated. Now all these were the prophets. They went through these things. Uh, verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and mountains, in the dens and caves of the earth. Verse 39, and all these, having obtained a righteous report, through the faith have not received, have not received the promise. Yahweh, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us would not be made perfect. So they without us would not be made perfect. Now you see all these things, the, the f going through the fire, these were the tests that they had to go through. And uh, we have to resurrect them. But they were tortured, and uh, they, re they received Yahweh's shadow, or we will receive Yahweh's shadow of protection if we keep Yahweh's laws. Now, uh, we may slip up and recover, like if we don't salt our food one time, if we work harder and salt our food the next time and after that and after that, if we recover, we will have Yahweh's protection if we go to confessions. Now, uh, remember the stone as uh, the great Khan Benjamin and the great Khan David went over the white stone. We have, to, we have to overcome to get that stone and remember that stone is the ticket to enter into Yahweh's kingdom. So put these goals in your mind to enter into the kingdom and to receive the stone. And uh, if we do that, if we set our minds in advance when these tests come, we, will, we won't fail the test, but we'll, uh, we will have Yahweh's protection. Now uh, with that, if you all please stand. It's my privilege and honor to present to you our uh, next speaker, Deacon Tawakia Hawkins. Praise Yahweh, you may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Now, if you remember a couple weeks ago, um, when the great Khan David and the great Khan Benjamin, they were talking about the stone of acquittal and the authority. Um, but I'm going to focus on one thing uh, the great Khan David said. Um, he was reading in Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, and he was talking, uh, he was reading the description of this authority. Um, 
And he said that this is, these things cannot be bought with money. So that's what I'm going to talk about, the things that you cannot buy with money. Um, we're going to start out in Revelations 5, verse 12, actually, if you can turn over to page 974. Um, Revelations 5, verse 12, it says, Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive power and riches. And we'll talk about that riches because it's not the riches of the world. Uh, and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So, what are, what are these things that it's speaking of? Well, this is a description of the authority. You can't buy it with money. Um, but the, another word for authority is scepter. Now, if we can be turning over to Genesis chapter 49... Uh, verse 10, Genesis 49, verse 10, found on page 43, it says, The scepter will not depart from Yada. And remember that Yada are the ones on the seven hills of Rome. Nor a ruling staff lawgiver from between his feet, until he comes to whom wisdom, who, or to whom tribute belongs, and the obedience of the nations is his. So notice that the scepter will not depart from Yada. Now, there's a scepter that the wicked have, or the authority that the wicked have, which is one um, that will be broken down, as we'll read. And then there's one that Yahweh has, the authority of Yahweh, which is one of true righteousness and peace. Let's start it with the uh, one that the wicked have. You can be turning over to Isaiah, chapter 14. Um, now, I have quite a few scriptures, so if you can, at least write them down and then go over them in your free time. But Isaiah, chapter 14, and verse 5, on, pa on page 538. It says, Yahweh has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. So this authority will be granted to Yisrael. The, wicked will, the wicked's authority will be done away with. The, one, the people that sit on the seven hills of Rome, that will be done away with. And this authority, when Yahshua sees the time, will be given to the one who overcomes, which is Yisrael Hawkins. Now, the authority that we're going to have here soon, if we prove ourselves worthy of it, is one of true righteousness. And we're told this about this in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, if you can be turning over to Hebrews 1, verse 8. It says uh, on page 943, it says, But to the Son, he says, The throne of your Father is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. So notice that, a scepter of righteousness. And this is what we're going to have, the authority of righteousness. Now, getting back to the things that you can't buy with money, um, if you remember the great apostle Shaul, he told us not to trust in riches, not to trust in the worldly things. Um, he said this in 1 Timothy 6, if you can be turning over. It's a couple pages from Hebrews, but he also told us that the love of money is the root of all evil. Okay, so that should tell us that we need to stay away from those things, away from the worldly things. And we're going to read about um, later on about an account in the scriptures where a person, they, they, saw, they had, had these barns and they had money and they were rich and wealthy and all these things. And what occurred? Well, they ended up dying that night. Okay, and that's what we're going to read about, about trusting in riches and what it brings. So First Timothy 6, if we look at verse 17, it says, Command those who are rich in, in, in this world that they not be haughty, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living Father who gives us richly all things to enjoy. We look to verse 18, that they do righteousness, that they be rich in righteous works, ready to be generous, willing to share. So notice, verse 17, they, they, that they not be haughty, not be proud, getting all sin out of us. What we, what we should be doing is being righteous, uh, and rich in righteous works. That, all the sermons that we've been given, the newsletters, prophetic words, books, um, which is plenty of information that we're given, we should be very rich in this righteous works, in righteousness, not in rich in the worldly things. Praise Yahweh. Now, the great apostle Shaul also told us that we need to hold on to that which is righteous, improve all things. So we, we should be holding fast to Yahweh, which is one of the laws. Um, he said that in 1 Thessalonians 5.21. I don't have time to read it, but you can write it down and go back and read that, but hold on to that which is righteous. Hold on to those things that are righteous. The laws of Yahweh have already been proven to work, and they do stop all sin, and that's something that you can count on. You don't have to worry about, well, do, does this law stop this sin? Yes, it stops all sin. Okay, we learned that the past couple of feasts. Okay, now, 
There was a man in the scripture that actually tried to buy the the authority that one that the apostles had to but the laying on of the hands and things like that. Um be turning to over to Acts chapter fourteen. And he tried to buy this this authority, but it didn't go his way. Acts chapter eight and verse fourteen. It's on page eight forty eight. It says now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of Yahweh, the law and the prophets, they sent Kepha and Yachanan to them. So the, uh, the people of Samaria, they had accepted the word of Yahweh. So they went down there, in verse 15, who when they had come down there, prayed for them, so that they might receive the Holy Spirit, which had not yet has fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of Yahshua Messiah. So they had been baptized. If we look at verse 17, it says, Then they laid hands on them, and they received Holy Spirit. So this would be a great authority to have, right? Well, notice, um, and when Simon, and keep in mind that Simon, in the beginning of, uh, b- before verse 14, the title says, Simon the Sorcerer. So Simon was a sorcerer. So um, he realized that through the laying on, the, uh, on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. So he wanted, he tried to buy this. And he said, give me this power also that whomever I may lay hands on, he may receive the Holy Spirit. But Kepha said to him, may your money perish with you because you thought the gift of Yahweh could be purchased with money. It can't. You have to prove yourself worthy of these things. Um, if we look at verse 21, you neither have part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of Yahweh. We have to make sure that our heart is right. We have to make sure that we are obeying and keeping all the laws, all the laws that are set before us. Verse 22, for this reason, repent of this, your wickedness, and pray that Yahweh, that, uh, pray to Yahweh that the thought of your heart may be forgiven of you. We need to constantly be praying, confessing, asking for forgiveness, get all sin out of our lives, all sinful thoughts out of our lives. Because remember, thoughts lead to feelings, feelings lead to actions, and actions lead to rewards or consequences or blessings and curses. Um, Verse 23, For I perceive that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to Yahweh for me that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. So, Keep in mind that these things cannot be bought with money. These, these gifts that Yahweh is going to be offering to us very soon, you cannot buy them with money. If we have the thought that they can be bought with money, we need to get that out and we need to repent of that. Um, like I said, you have to prove yourself worthy of them. In closing, be turning over to Luke chapter 12. And this is the account where the man, he, he got all these things, he built storehouses and all that, and um, he he didn't trust in Yahweh. He wasn't rich with Yahweh, as we were told in 1 Timothy to be. Um, on page 797, Luke chapter 12, and we're going to start out in verse 15. It says, Then he said to them, Be on guard and beware of covetousness, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Then he spoke to them, spoke a parable to them, saying, There was a certain rich man whose land produced abundant crops. Then he thought to himself, saying, What should I do? Because I do not have enough room to store my produce. So if we're thinking these things, what should we do? Let's say you have a a bunch of uh, plants that you need, grain, um, and you have a bunch left over. What should you do with them? Well, you always have the house of Yahweh that you can donate them to. Okay? So he wasn't thinking of that. And that's what he should have been thinking of. But notice what he was thinking of. Uh, what should I do because I do not have room enough to store my produce? Verse 18, so he, so he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones, and I will store all my produce and my possessions in there. So he had small barns, so he tore those down, built bigger ones. Okay, and then he said, then I will say to myself, so you have many possessions stored up for many years. So take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Sounds like the world right now. Take it easy. That's eat, drink, and rise up to play. I'm not even worrying about what could befall them that night. Verse 20, But Yahweh said to him, Fool, this night your life will be required of you. Then to whom will these things belong, which you have stored up? 
So he wasn't thinking about the things that could occur in the future. He stored up all this stuff, all this grain, but he wasn't rich with Yahweh. If we look in verse 21, so it will be with him who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich with Yahweh. Brethren, make sure that we're rich with Yahweh before we go making sure we're rich in the world, okay? Trusting in riches can bring death upon us, okay? So with that, if y'all please stand, I have the great honor and privilege to turn it over to the great Deacon Yosha Label. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Now this service has been unlike any service in the history of the house of Yahweh. And it's been put on by the sons of Yisrael Abel. There has never been a service like this in history. And that's what we are to be referred to from this point on. I would like to show you some of the progress the sons of Abel are making. Pastor writes press releases and sends them to the news media. The first one here, Yishol Hawkins says all nations can end war and live in peace with one proven plan in New Post. Release date 3-13-2015, which was yesterday. Total headline impressions 46,036. Now these have picked it up and they have sent it to others. The first one here, 13 WTHR. Dot com view release type television affiliate location Indianapolis Indiana the audience is five million five hundred and thirty three thousand nine hundred and thirty three view release type television affiliate location Erie Pennsylvania audience four hundred and eighty thousand three hundred and eighteen news New release television, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, audience 571,169. Five five KCBD, view release television, Lubbock, Texas, audience 842,302. And these are just four of the 46 million that have picked this up. Praise Yahweh. It says here, audience, 71,733,000 thus far. Yishel Hawkins tells scientists exactly what makes life function properly in new publication. The top one here is Reuters in the United States, and it's 617,000. Boston Globe, United States newspaper, media, and information, 561,000. Wichita Business, United States Newspaper, Media, and Information, 389,000. Washington Business Journal, 389,000. Minneapolis, St. Paul Business Journal, 389,000. Triangle Business Journal, Newspaper, Media, and Information, 389,000. Business Today, India. India, did you get that? India. And that's 23,000. Uh, Resource Nation, Global. Did you get that one too? It's Global. And that's 11,000. So this message is spreading. Now I'm going to be talking to you, and the title of my sermon is You Can Overcome. It is possible to overcome sin. Don't yield again, to the deception of the religions that Jesus did it all for you. If you'll turn over to 1 Diakonon 3. First Diakonon 3, and let's look at verse 4, and that's found on page 965. And it says, Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And let's go down to verse 7. And it says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. So what can you do? Well, let's turn over to Jacob. Jacob. 
Yaakov chapter 4, and let's look at verse 7. That's found on page 955, and it says, Therefore, submit yourselves to Yahweh. Resist the devil, and she will flee from you. So resist the devil, and then let's go over to Acts 3. Acts 3, and let's look at verse 19. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of Yahweh. So resist the devil, repent, and be converted. And Yahweh said the same thing to Cain in Genesis 4, verse 7. Let's go there. Genesis 4, and verse 7, and it says, If you do righteousness, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do righteousness, sin is crouching at your door. The desire to sin is with you, but you must overcome it. So overcome it. He who overcomes. This phrase is mentioned a lot in the book of Yahweh, the Holy Scriptures. Let's go over to Romans 12. Romans 12. And it's found on page 8. Let's see, 883 is where I'm going to be reading. Romans 12 and verse 20, 21. It says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with righteousness. And uh, remember the number 17. And uh, it means overcoming. And that, remember, that's the first number on the, the white stone, the stone of acquittal. And uh, also in Revelations 21 verse 7, Revelations 21 and verse 7. And that says, He who overcomes will inherit all things, and I will be his father, and he will be my son. So he who overcomes will inherit all things. You have to overcome, resist. Remember, resist the devil. Repent and practice righteousness. In the 10th book of Israel, part 1, uh, chapter 1 and verse 31 Pastor says here, he's reading from Revelations 3, and it says, verse 12, He who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the house of Yahweh, in the house of my Father. He who overcomes. Now, he doesn't say, he who hangs on to your stupidity, your ignorance, your rebellion. You're making it impossible for the priest to help you. That is not overcoming. Overcoming is the word of the Savior. Humble yourself as a little child. Become a slave in the house of Yahweh, as I am right now. I would, I would shine your shoes. I'd lick your feet if I thought it would help you. I'd do anything I possibly can. I am doing everything that I know how to do. But he says, he who overcomes. That's the overcoming part that we will get back more on later. And then the next thing is enduring, of course. Now, conversion means to stop practicing sin, stop sinning, stop no, or sin no more, and practice Yahweh's righteousness. Let's go over to Revelations 2. And look at verse 11. And it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the called out ones of the house of Yahweh. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. So unless you overcome, you will be hurt by the second death. Remember, because those who practice sin, which is the breaking of Yahweh's laws, they belong to Satan and cannot receive life from Yahweh. In the 10th book of Israel, chapter 2, and verse, uh, verses 32, at the bottom of verse 32 it says here, to him who overcomes. Now he set two trees here, one of righteousness and the other of a mixture of anything. It's just a concoction, a witch's brew of anything you want to choose, anything at all. All is fair in love and war. All is diseased in love and war, disease and death. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life. That tree of life is Yahweh himself, brethren. He is your life and he feeds you through his word. That's where you get it. And if you starve yourself of this word, you nev you'll never understand. 
You go out of here with an empty head and you're not building your mind to be as Yahshua. If you are as Yahshua, then you'll inherit it. You'll be a seed of Abraham and a heir of all this authority, all this wonderful abundant living that Yahweh has in plan for you. So only if we overcome can we be a part of Yahweh's great kingdom. Well, how do you overcome? A sermon given by pastor on 415 2014 there's a quote in the in the calendar but uh it says so practice these judgments and prove to Yahweh and prove to Yahweh how angry you can become how long you can hold your anger how long you can hold your bitterness and hatred how hateful you can be with your mouth and your mind and your brain no you have to come here and overcome that. Yeshua said to him who overcomes, not to him that, that yields to it, not to him that yields to it. How do you overcome? You do what the priest says at the house of Yahweh, where Yahweh says, I will choose to place my name in the last days. You do what they teach you to do, humbly, without going to the right or to the left. That's what you're told to do, and this is what brings you to this overcoming. I would say 90% of the people here in this congregation are there. They're to that point. At least, may, at least that may be more. Praise Yahweh. Now, so Deuteronomy 12 verse 5, which says to go to the place that uh, I will choose to place my name. And then in Deuteronomy 17 verse 9, go to the priest. Uh, and verse 10, be careful to do all that they order you to do and don't turn to the right or to the left. And remember to rejoice. Even through the test and the trials. We should rejoice. Remember what Matthew 5 verse 12 says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. And remember Pastor Sermon last week. And he talked about salt. And the overcoming. And how rejoicing is a step to show overcoming. And he talked about salt. Does everyone remember uh, the number 217? Uh... This is uh, the Strong's number 217, and it says here, salt, figuratively prudent, salt. And then down here, it says wisdom, and then exhibited in speech. So that's uh, the number 217. Remember, have salt within yourselves and rejoice. If you'll turn over to Second Kepha, Second Kepha, chapter two, and verse nineteen, and it says, "While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For by whom any one is overcome, to him he is enslaved. Now, if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of Yahweh and the Savior Yahshua Messiah, they are again entangled in them." And overcome by them, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So when you are overcome by something, you are enslaved by it. So we need to overcome sin so that the sin doesn't over, overtake us. Remember the Apostle Shaul in uh, 2 Corinthians. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians. Or no, 1 Corinthians, sorry about that. 1 Corinthians 9, and let's look at verse 27. And it says, No, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. And, uh, that was, okay. So now let's go over to 1 Diakonon again. 1 Diakonon chapter 2, and remember what it said there, how he brings his body into subjection. Let's go over to 1st Yachanan. Chapter 2, and look at verse 13. And it says, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him, Yahweh, who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. 
I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him, Yahweh, who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of Yahweh, the law and the prophets, abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Now he is talking to this group here. Let's go over to Revelation 7, verse 14. Or 17, sorry about that. 17, Revelation 17 and verse 14. And remember that number 17 and what it means uh, with the overcoming. It says here, These will make war with the Lamb, but the Lamb will overcome them. For He is the ruler of rulers and King of kings. And those who are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. So the Lamb will overcome with us, and we can overcome... Because we are called, chosen, and faithful. You can overcome. 